Well, the markets have gone through uh, turbulent times. We have not seen this before globally. Uh, uh, but Uganda has had an interesting uh, couple of months. Uh, from uh, the start of the COVID scare in Uganda and, and, and the beginning of the lockdown in March, we saw a lot of volatility with the, the currency depreciating to levels of 39, above 39.50 in a two-week period uh, from levels of about uh, 3,700. Uh, and then quickly, the central bank stepped in to intervene uh, and, and calmed down uh, the markets. Uh, since then, we have seen a lot of calm, I'll say, in the currency market specifically, which is uh, quite strange because when you compare to the other currencies, the regional currencies, they have maintained a weakened stance, uh, but Uganda has, uh, has, 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 has had positivity in that, in that regard. A couple of factors. The first one was that with the lockdown coming into place, uh, demand reduced. So there was some panic buying, let's say, in March, where people were thinking, okay, we don't know where this thing is going. We've seen that uh, with South African run lose over 10%. We've seen the Kenya shilling lose over uh, 4%. Uh, we've seen a lot of the African currencies depreciate. A lot of people rushed to buy in March and, and, and to protect themselves. But <clears throat> after the lockdown, demand kind of diminished. Why? Uh, uh, the petroleum companies, for example, had already stocked up on supplies and then transport is halted. So that means there is no demand. Uh, because people are locked up at home and they're not moving from one place to the other, even the first moving consumer goods slowed down. So uh, uh, the people who are manufacturing those uh, detergents, soaps, cooking oil, all of those saw a shrinkage in demand because people are now locked down. But more recently, what we have seen is that uh, there has been what we call a risk of sentiment, meaning that uh, before COVID or at the start of COVID, uh, investors were afraid and were taking out their capital and taking it to safe havens of, of, of the more developed markets. Now, with uh, easing of lockdowns in many countries and also beginning to ease the lockdown in Uganda, we see a resumption of economic activity and people trying to take advantage of uh, uh, good deals. So in the financial markets, you've had stories of China buying up a lot of stocks. Uh, you've had even even in, 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 in the UK and the US, a lot of investors picking up stocks which they think were fairly cheap. Even in Uganda, when you look at it, uh, the 10 year was at 16%. We had an auction, it was oversubscribed by over two times, and it came to below 15%. Uh, by the end of the week, the 10 year which was trading at, uh, at at 16 was trading at 14.5 or lower you know what drove that I mean uh, the offshore interest so the offshore people who had stayed out of the market and thought you know it's, it's it's risky being in this market now realize look growth is going to be low inflation is going to be below five percent if the currency does not depreciate and remain stable the way it has it means that this is a good investment opportunity and so we saw an influx of foreign investors. That has helped the currency significantly. Things may not immediately return to normal, but there will definitely be an improvement. Do we expect by the end of 2020 to have growth levels of 5%? No. Right now, growth levels may be quite low. Uh, uh, we think that maybe by the end of the year, there will be a slight pickup. So if, if, if activity dropped by 50% because of COVID or 30%, you can assume that maybe by December it will move back up to 70%, uh, let's say, of post-COVID levels, but that is highly dependent on the factors and the sector. Yeah? If you're looking at uh, tourism, as long as the flights are not open, as long as tourists are not allowed to travel freely, then you won't see that influx. Of tourists coming in which means that that dollar inflow we we're counting on and that activity coming from the tourism sector whether it's hotels lodges and transport affected by tourism that pickup won't come as much however uh, if you're looking at the local sectors like local consumption of fast-moving consumer goods and petroleum products that may definitely pick up 
to 70% or 60% of post-COVID levels by the end of the year.